Is this the end of Airbnb? What's going on behind it? And more importantly, is this bust going to happen here in the Philippines? Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. In this channel, we cover quite a bit about the Airbnb business. There is this very concerning buzz about Airbnb called the Airbnb bust. Simply put, Airbnb bust is the bubble of Airbnb finally bursting. One of the more famous Airbnb hosts here on YouTube, Shelby Church, is said to be quitting Airbnb for good. I'm quitting Airbnb. No, it's not clickbait. It just doesn't make sense anymore. What's going on behind it? And more importantly, is this bust going to happen here in the Philippines? This is what we'll look to cover in this video. Is this the end of Airbnb? Stick around and let's find out. Let's go. So before anything, if you are new to this channel, I am Mark. I've been an Airbnb guest for over 10 years now. As an Airbnb host, I've been doing it here in the Philippines for a little over eight to nine years. So I have had quite a number of years on Airbnb. I've seen it through a lot of its changes from its old logo, really getting started when there were very few hosts around. So what I'm sharing here are my observations and really my predictions if this Airbnb bubble will really affect us here in the Philippines. So while I'm not a fortune teller, what I'm sharing here would be my observations and I leave it up to you guys if you think I'm right or wrong. So first, let's talk on a global scale and why Shelby Church is quitting Airbnb. So while the Airbnb business and platform continue to be strong and continues to be one of the most heralded companies as a unicorn in Silicon Valley, there are a lot of factors contributing to why people are having this prediction of the demise of Airbnb and more importantly, why hosts are quitting the platform. I'm gonna try to simplify this, but number one is that there are ongoing regulations, restrictions from governments on how people actually get to run their Airbnbs. Now famously, in big cities such as New York, San Francisco, Airbnb has been regulated to the point that if you are a host, you need to be staying in the condominium, in the property itself, to be able to accommodate guests. So in these key cities, you can't do what we do here in the Philippines wherein we let guests stay in our place and we just leave them there for days, even weeks at a time. Because of housing shortages in key cities abroad, Airbnb has been seen to artificially trigger the rise of rental properties. So the common folk, the everyday salary man, ends up not being able to afford rent where they are really supposed to be living because Airbnb hosts end up taking over a place, running it as an Airbnb, and this is driving rental upwards and driving out the people who really need it most. So this actually brings us to point number two, wherein there is already sort of a backlash against Airbnb. People are saying that it's unethical. People are being driven out of their decades old rentals because they simply can't afford it anymore. And therein lies that problem that Airbnb hosts take over and buy into or rent a property at a much higher rate because of Airbnb. So there is this backlash, this sort of moral questioning, is Airbnb right? So that's on the deeper side of things. But simply put, some people are also not liking Airbnb so much anymore. When Airbnb started, this really gave travelers the alternative to be staying in a home that is not too expensive, that is in a good location, that really offered a different experience for guests. But now as the big chains, the big hotels, and even boutiques have caught up, they have started putting in kitchens also in their rooms and have really started to make hotel rooms more affordable. These hotels have caught up with the Airbnb value proposition and really giving travelers an option to be staying back in hotels rather than Airbnbs. People are also saying that Airbnbs are too expensive now. And we don't have to look so far. In fact, Hotel 101, which is owned by Tony Tan Kak Chong and Injap Sia, has been put up not only as an alternative to Airbnb, but ultimately to be an Airbnb killer. So those are the things that are going on on the side of guests and travelers. But going back to the hosting side of things, Shelby Church is said to be quitting because there are simply more taxes, more charges that are going on in California. It's a new bill that's introducing an additional 15% tax anytime you go to book an Airbnb in California. It's called SB 584 and they're rushing to get this into effect by 2025. So that is one case in California, but it is also happening around the world. Being an Airbnb host simply isn't as lucrative as it used to be. And taking this from the global and now to our local setting, 
you may have come across this news that the BIR will be more aggressively charging Airbnb hosts and other online sellers. So definitely the concern of Airbnb hosts around the world about more regulation coming in, this is also happening here in the Philippines. So now let's take this conversation in the context of the Philippines. You might be thinking that this is where I'm leading up to and this is what will cause the demise of Airbnb. While that is a valid contributory factor, I'm seeing other factors that may make it hard for us Airbnb hosts here in the Philippines. So let's get to the bottom of this. Will the Airbnb bubble also bust here in the Philippines? My prediction is yes, but it's not going to create the same impact as it will for other Airbnb hosts around the world. Here in the Philippines, I don't think it will be a complete bust. Let's start with the good points. I think Airbnb and the whole concept of short-term rentals will continue to be relevant here in our country. As I share that in other countries, there is a moral dilemma. There is an ethics question coming up. That factor actually doesn't apply to us here in the Philippines because most of the condominiums, the apartments that are being rented out abroad, are actually old vintage buildings in downtowns. While here in the Philippines, we don't really have that issue because most of our condominiums are new. A lot of the condos that you see around Pasay, BGC, and Makati haven't even been around for more than 20 years. So there are no tenants or dwellers staying there that have been there for a while that Airbnb hosts ultimately kick out. So the issue of rentals going up artificially isn't really a concern here in the Philippines. And sticking to the customer, the guest side of things, I think the Philippines as a developing country, Airbnb will continue to be relevant in offering travelers an alternative to hotels. Even though I've mentioned earlier that hotel chains have caught up, I think the Philippines being heavily cost conscious and heavily trafficked, I think that Airbnbs will continue to be relevant. But even with all that demand, I still think that an Airbnb bubble bust is coming. It's not because of regulation. I actually think that that's a good thing. It's also not a lowering of demand. So what's it about? I think we will have an oversupply of Airbnb homes, especially here in Metro Manila and other city centers. So one of the services that I offer is I partner up with you guys in helping you run your homes as an Airbnb. While that might sound like a plug, and it is, what I want to share with you is that I do get quite a number of inquiries on my Google Forms page. Not only have I realized that there are so many of you who want to become Airbnb hosts, but also there are so many condominium developments that are coming up all over the Philippines. While I've always known this, I didn't realize how many developments are just going on out there. Each and every day, I get a comment or a new inquiry about wanting to become an Airbnb host. So my point is simply this, even though there is a lot of demand for guests to be staying in Airbnb homes, I think we're getting to a point of oversaturation, of oversupply. I know tourism is growing and the economy is going up, but I don't know if the pace of growth of tourism and the economy is actually in the same pace of Airbnb hosts wanting in on the action. I can't blame you guys for this. I mean, I guess I'm one of the triggers here. I mean, I'm clearly contributory to it. I know our airports are being built, the new Bulacan Airport, rehabilitation of Naia, Clark is brand new, and Cebu Mactan is also freshly put together. But even with all that, I think we still have oversupply of condominiums and would-be Airbnb homes. I don't know if it's enough to make us all Airbnb hosts happy in the long-term future. Case in point, let's look at Makati. And specifically, let's look at the developments of SMDC here. So for Makati alone, it started with jazz residences, and then air residences and lush residences came up. And new projects coming up would be jade residences and freshly turned over would be red residences. And that's just what I know so far. I know SMDC has a lot on their sales pipeline. And in that same road of Chino Rosses Avenue and Chino Rosses Extension, for Mega World, there is San Lorenzo Place and Vion Tower just across one another in EDSA. So my point is there's just so much supply that's going to be coming that again, I don't know, is there Airbnb demand for all of that? I mean, these developers would put up 50 to 60 stories, each having 20, 30 units per floor. Even if just 20 to 30% of that become Airbnb homes, that's still a lot of supply. And I think that will greatly affect the pricing of Airbnbs. And I've seen rates dip. They've become much lower lately, especially this year. So price is being affected. It's getting lower each month. And with rates going down, 
Again, I don't know how many of us will continue to be happy. And really, this is my prediction of the Airbnb bubble busting here in the Philippines. Again, I'm not a fortune teller. This is just an observation, a prediction based on the trend that I'm seeing all over. I'm doing this not to discourage you, but simply give you a dose of truth. I've told you before in a video that I made a few months back that I actually wouldn't buy a property for the sole purpose of wanting to Airbnb it because as shared in that video, Airbnb is such a volatile, fluctuating business that we really don't know how it will play out in the next few years or even just next year. How will the regulatory concerns play out? If you want to buy a property, have Airbnb as one of your options. But don't let it be your plan A. Don't make it be your sole purpose. Buy a property because you like it. You see yourself probably living in it. And more importantly, you see the price of that property appreciating not because the sales agent told you so, but because you actually see potential in the growth and infrastructure of that area. What do you think? Is the Airbnb bubble going to burst here in the Philippines? Have I missed something? Let me know in the comment section. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, guys, and happy Airbnb hosting!